It was the fall of my sophomore year in college, and I needed a part-time job to pay for my ever-growing stack of textbooks. A friend tipped me off about a local Halloween store that was hiring, and I thought it would be the perfect gig for the season. I mean, how hard could it be, right? The store, named Spooktacular Emporium, was a quirky little place tucked away in a strip mall. As soon as I walked in for my interview, I was greeted by the sight of rubber spiders, fake blood, and costumes of every variety. A quirky but friendly manager named Terry interviewed me, and I was hired on the spot. I was given the task of being a spooky guide, which essentially meant I had to help customers find the perfect Halloween costume. Everything was fine during my first few shifts, but Halloween week brought a surge of customers. I was bustling around, helping people pick out masks, capes, and creepy makeup. I even found myself explaining the difference between a vampire costume and a zombie costume more times than I ever thought possible. Then, the big mishap happened on Halloween Eve. As I was organizing the costumes in the back, I overheard Terry talking to a customer who was looking for a realistic zombie costume. Terry was selling it like it was a real thing, complete with stories of actors who had used it in movies. I couldn't resist jumping in to add some drama to the pitch. I grabbed the costume and dramatically declared, This is the one! It's so lifelike! People will mistake you for an actual zombie! Terry winked at me, playing along, and said, He's right! It's one of our best sellers! The customer, a guy in his 20s, was excited. He purchased the costume and left the store with a big grin. I patted myself on the back for my stellar salesmanship. But here's where things went south. About an hour later, I heard loud, panicked screaming coming from outside the store. I rushed out with Terry and to our shock, we saw the same customer we'd sold the zombie costume to running down the sidewalk, flailing his arms and shouting. Terry and I exchanged worried glances, fearing that something might have gone terribly wrong with the costume. We ran after the guy who had by now attracted a small crowd of onlookers. As we caught up to him, we realized what the problem was. The guy was wearing the zombie costume, but it was so realistic that people genuinely thought he was a zombie. Passersby were terrified, and some even ran away screaming. We tried to explain to the guy that he should take the costume off, but he was in such a state of panic that he couldn't understand us. Eventually, we had to help him remove the costume, and as soon as he did, the crowd realized it was just a prank and started laughing. Terry and I felt both relieved and embarrassed. We offered the guy a full refund, but he declined, saying he'd learned his lesson about pranks. The story, however, quickly became a legend in our small town, and Spooktacular Emporium gained a reputation for selling costumes so realistic they could terrify the neighborhood. That Halloween mishap turned out to be the talk of the town, and I had a good laugh about it, once the embarrassment had worn off. It's safe to say I learned that sometimes, it's best not to oversell the scare factor, especially when it comes to Halloween costumes.